and welcome to Unlocking Shakespeare. My name is Lucy, Shakespeare expert in the making, and today I'm going to show you how I'll analyze the section of Much Ado About Nothing's Act 4, Scene 1, or what I like to call the Kill Claudio scene. First, I'll perform it, and then I'll walk you through my analysis. A Lady Beatrice, have you wept all this while? Yea, and I will weep a while longer. I will not desire that. You have no reason. I do it freely. Surely I do believe your fair cousin is wronged. Ah, how much might the man deserve of me that would right her? Is there any way to show such friendship? A very even way, but no such friend. May a, <clears throat> a, a man do it? It is a man's office, but not yours. I do love nothing in the world so well as you. Is not that strange? As strange as the thing I know not. It were as possible for me to say I love nothing so well as you, but believe me not, yet I lie not. I confess nothing, nor I deny nothing. I'm sorry for my cousin. Oh, by my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Do not swear, and eat it. I will swear by it that you love me, and make him eat it that says I love not you. Will you not eat your word? With no sauce that can be devised to it. I protest I love thee. Why then, God forgive me. What offense, sweet Beatrice? You have stayed me in a happy hour. I was about to protest I loved you, and do it with all thy heart. I love you with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. Come, bid me do anything for thee. Kill Claudio. Now let's get into our analysis. One of the first things I noticed was that Beatrice and Benedict are speaking a pretty much equal amount in this scene. In fact, through the course of Much Ado, their lines are often matched in length and amount, which signifies that Beatrice and Benedict are equals, especially in terms of intellect. Another thing that I notice is that Beatrice and Benedict will use each other's words and phrases in their own lines, either by changing the tense with wept and weep, uh, playing opposites like with wronged and right, or lifting words and phrases just as they are. Let's look at the text and see where they borrow each other's words. In our first section of the scene, the repetition is simple, with only Beatrice using Benedict's words. She takes way and such friend from him, and then takes man in her next line. Now, this next part is one of my favorites. Beatrice takes Benedict's line, I do love nothing in the world so well as you. Is not that strange? And lifts both phrases and specific words. She alters his line to say, I loved nothing so well as you, lifts the word strange, and repeats not and nothing multiple times. This exchange here changes the way that the two repeat each other from then on, and they no longer simply speak in couplets. For example, swear, not, and eat it are exchanged over the course of three lines. Then Beatrice brings back Benedict's protest I love thee as protest I love you, and then reuses the word protest along with heart, which she lifted from Benedict's previous line. This is a dramatic technique called stichomythia, and Shakespeare uses it often. It's a Greek word combining stichos, which means verse or row, and mythos, which means speech. It describes a dramatic phenomenon that originated in Greek theater where characters expressing opposite viewpoints use each other's words in their arguments. So, stichomythia is used to elevate arguments or banter by upping the tempo and heightening the wordplay, but it also conveys compatibility. Beatrice and Benedict begin the play as rivals, so they display this kind of verbal repartee throughout the play. So, if the scene is the two of them confessing their love, why does it retain this banterous style that they formerly used to insult each other? I see this use of the stichomythia format as evidence that Beatrice and Benedict, confused by their new romantic feelings for each other, aren't yet ready to let go of the friendly verbal sparring that they're so used to. How characters say their lines is just as telling as what they say. In short, Shakespeare used stichomythia to bring a comic element to the scene, but also to show us that love is nowhere as easy as it looks. 